Hello people, this is Sonali, the Melodramatic Bookworm. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, welcome to the Melodramatic Bookworm family. I'm here today with more than 60 book recommendations for you. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, this year is ending. And as we reach the end of the year, all of us bookworms, what do we do? We scramble to complete our Goodreads goal. So I had done one such video when uh, in 2020, if I'm not mistaken, and in that video, I'd spoken about more than 40 books. And in this video, which is a uh, which is an upgraded version of that video. I'll be talking to you about more than 60 books uh, which you can pick up and finish like this. And your Goodreads goal will also be completed like this. So uh, there are books that I've mentioned in that video that I've brought here. I wanted to do a consolidated kind of thing, but I've also, I've read a lot of short books, a lot of amazing short books in the past couple of years. So I thought, I would include those in this video. So without any further ado, since there are so many books, uh, let's get right on with this video and let me share with you the 60 plus book recommendations that I have for you today, which you can pick up and which you can read to smash your Goodreads goal out of the park. First, any Nikita Gill book, uh, be it poetry or be it novel in verse or anything that she writes, they are easy to read language wise but they uh, they are kind they are uh, warm they are compassionate they are empowering and they are so much more they are the feminist punch that you need to your gut on any given day so there are like six or seven books so i would recommend every single one of them next are a series and a book by Alice Osman. The series is obviously the Heartstopper series. There are four volumes out and the book, uh, the novella is Nick and Charlie. Nick and Charlie follows the characters from Heartstopper uh, and uh, this whole series is a very warm, very beautiful telling of a teenage relationship, of a teenage queer relationship. And Alice Oseman does not only talk about a queer relationship in this, they also have added a lot of other uh, details. For example, mental health disorders or eating disorders. And they have covered all of this in such a warm, supportive manner. And they have also mentioned that in this series, their focus was on support, healing and recovery. The Heartstopper series are graphic novels and Nick and Charlie is a novella. Next is The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint Exupery. This is a very beautiful children's book in which you see the truths of life about how uh, human beings are going about their everyday life and how they don't see the beauty of nature, how they don't appreciate it. And I've been watching one particular series and this book is there everywhere and I love that. And I absolutely love that and I think that this is a book that everybody must read ir irrespective of age. Next are three books by Jhumpa Lahiri. One is The Clothing of Books in which uh, Jhumpa Lahiri talks about the importance of a book cover. The second is In Other Words and in which she talks about uh, her experience with learning a new language, uh, Italian. The reason why I love In Other Words so much is because uh, I understand the author's attraction to the Italian language and how it's like you can't really explain why you're really attracted to that or to any particular thing, any particular language. I, I found myself in that book and uh, the language is also so simple. Uh, it, it's like 150, 160 pages. And uh, even though she's talking about so much, you can get through it pretty easily. Similar is the next book, which is Whereabouts. Whereabouts is also a 170, 180 page long book in which the author uh, is telling through a fragmented segment, she's an, an unnamed narrator is talking about her experiences living alone in Rome. And she takes us through this whole variety of thoughts and about uh, the narrator's uh, relationship with books, the narrator's relationship with solitude in itself. And I loved it as a solitary person. Like I love solitude. I love being on my own to read that, to see that see myself reflected in those pages was something else altogether. Uh, don't go in with too many expectations because I've seen a lot of people not like that book as well. I would recommend it, but I would also say proceed with caution. 
Next are three books by Elizabeth Acevedo. The first one is The Poet X by uh, Elizabeth Acevedo, uh, which is a coming of age story about a girl uh, who is battling between her family, her religion, and her urge to become a slam poet. It was my first audiobook ever, and I fell in love with Elizabeth Acevedo after that. There, her storytelling is so powerful. When you, even if you just read the book and not listen to her slam poetry, which I would recommend you do. You listen to Elizabeth Acevedo narrate her stories and it's going to be the best thing ever. And the next one is uh, With the Fire on High in which uh, she talks about a 16 year old girl, uh, a teenage mother who I, I think she likes to cook. She takes culinary arts or something. And uh, this whole, her whole experience of being a teenage mother and how she gets through life, it's, oh, wonderful. I've already read it twice. And the next book is Clap When You Land, which is the story of two sisters who don't know about each other's existence. Uh, they are half sisters. And until the day their father dies in a plane crash and it's just gut-wrenching that book I mean it's not on the level of poetex or with the fire on high but it's but it's simple brilliant writing next is the brown sisters trilogy by Talia Hibbert uh, the first is get a life Chloe Brown the second is uh, take a hint Danny Brown and the third is act your age Eve Brown uh, I love this trilogy. I mean, I love Get A Life Chloe Brown the most because I relate with it the most uh, as a person with chronic pain. Uh, it, uh, it sort of, I saw myself in that story, but the, uh, Chloe and Red's relationship is also like very uh, fun. And the second one is uh, Take A Hint Danny Brown, which is uh, about a bisexual woman in a whole fake dating uh, trope. And then the third one is about Eve, uh, who is the youngest of the Brown sisters and uh, about how she, uh, in her quest to uh, make a life of her own, what happens and uh, how she runs away from home and what happens after that, who she meets and all of that and how her life changes. It's a great trilogy because uh, throughout this uh, uh, throughout the stories, uh, Talia Hibbert makes sure that she brings in compassion. She brings in awareness to how someone is is being treated. It's very humane, the, this whole trilogy. A word of caution, if you don't like adult romances, uh, then these books can get a little steamy. Next is the Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan. Of course, I had to add this series over here because it's great. The Percy Jackson series is about uh, Percy Jackson and other demigods. These people are children of the Greek gods and humans. Like they are half gods, which is demigods, obviously. And this follows Percy Jackson and his adventures about how he realizes who he is, who his father is. And uh, he goes to Camp Half-Blood where he meets other demigods and he uh, becomes best friends with Annabeth and Grover and how they embark on this whole adventure of sorts. And this is amazing, like one of my favorite, favorite, favorite series of all time. And I cannot wait for uh, the series to come out, the TV show to come out. We did a Bookbound Club live show for it. This was the first ever Bookbound live show that we did. Uh, and uh, we had so much fun doing it. Uh, if you'd like to go check that out, link will be here as well as in the description box below. Next up are two books by Marjan Satrapi. One is uh, Persepolis, uh, the, story of, uh, the story of a childhood. And uh, the, the next one is the story of a return. And this is Marjan Sat Satrapi's own story about how she moved from Tehran to uh, Vienna. And uh, um, amidst all the uh, political uh, turmoil that Iran was going through and uh, the story of a childhood is about her, how she grew up, how her family, her uh, parents and her uh, grandmother, they imbibed in her all of these uh, ideas or the right ideas. They did not shy away from educating her about that. And as she grew up and she uh, realized what was going on, her decision to move from Tehran to Vienna, how, how it takes her. And the next book, uh, is the story of a return which follows her return from 
her return to Tehran. Marjan Satrapi has done the illustrations herself and uh, it's a great book. It's so educative, informative, gut-wrenching. If you look at it in the current perspective, I think it will be even more uh, eye-opening than before. And the next one is Embroideries uh, in which uh, it follows a, a group of women who are sitting in their living room and uh, discussing uh, things over tea I think and the way they talk about what's happening in their lives about their significant others about uh, society about politics it's it's a very fun book uh, I mean it you wouldn't probably expect it after Persepolis despite all the uh, hardships the uh, levity that it has within that humor it's great next is long way down by jason reynolds this is a novel in verse if you can call it in which uh, uh will i think the main character is his brother is shot dead in the streets and now will finds a revolver in his home and he takes it and he he just sets out to take revenge for his brother and now in the lift on the long way down he is confronted with the ghosts of uh, people who he knew who he knows they try to tell him they try to reason with him what would be the correct way to do and what does he actually end up doing forms a story and it's one of the most brilliantly written books i've ever read i finished it in like one one and a half hour if i'm not mistaken next are two books by my favorite matt haig uh the truth pixie and a boy called christmas the truth pixie is about a, the truth pixie who can tell nothing but the truth. What trouble that lands her in forms this whole little story, which is so cute, which is which will still make you think. A Boy Called Christmas is story of the boy who later became Father Christmas, his backstory and all. How his father goes off on a quest to find something and uh, he is left with his aunt, but, but then he uh, also sets off behind his father and what he discovers from there is this entire story it's it's nice it's a very quick read but it's very warm of course matt haig being matt haig did a great job with the story i loved it highly recommend next are two books that have been written by neil gaiman and with illustrations by chris riddell the first one is art matters which is about how art matters in this world and how art is important how creativity is important it's not just about improving creativity it's about attaching importance to your creativity and how the world should see that art matters and the second one is the sleeper and the spindle it is a sort of a crossover retelling between snow white and the seven dwarves and uh, sleeping beauty and it's a very quick read both of these are very quick reads i think half an hour you'll finish each of these books and they are great they are greatly entertaining reads especially uh, uh the sleeper and the spindle which is like when you read a fairy tale like this with a twist it it just settles down in your mind and art matters as much as it's a quick read it's a very important read so these two highly recommend Next are two more books by Neil Gaiman. One is The Graveyard Book and the other is Coraline. The Graveyard Book is about uh, how a boy uh, is turned out. I think his parents are murdered and uh, he is taken in by people at the graveyard. And uh, it's a very creepy, eerie book. And Coraline is about, obviously Coraline, who moves to a new place with her parents and she uh, finds herself uh, opening a door which she was told not to open but when she opens that door she goes into this other world uh, in which everything seems the same but the people are different like they have buttons for eyes and they behave uh, a certain different way but she finds that her life here is more interesting than her original life and she starts living here but uh, she realizes that she wants to go back she cannot live here and uh, will she be able to come back to her uh, life uh, with her actual parents and it's as creepy as it sounds it's uh, imagine being locked in a completely different world or something i can't 
both uh, Coraline and the graveyard book are as creepy as they are amazing and as amazing as they are creepy so you they are short reads as well I mean maximum two and a half hours uh, if you just sit down two and a half to three hours if you sit down and uh, you can finish them and I'm stretching it I'm stretching it a lot next is uh, the strange library by Haruki Murakami uh, this is a strange book indeed like it's it's just it will take you half an hour to read but to understand it you will have to take quite some time i still don't understand it i'm going to read it a second time this is about some a, a teenager i think who is on the lookout for some details about the ottoman empire if i'm not mistaken and then he goes into this library and uh, the librarian i think he uh, guides him into a room of sorts is he locked in there? Is he trapped in there? Will he be able to escape from there? What does he have to do to escape? It's like very weird. It's a very uh, strange book, but it's very entertaining. You're like, it's typical Haruki Murakami because Murakami can do anything and you'll be like, huh, this is Murakami's universe. Chalta hai. Anything can happen here. It's okay. You'll accept it. Just if you are spending half an hour on the book, then I think you'll have to spend about one hour on understanding what the book is about. Next up is The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. This is a novella. It's absurd as fiction, if I'm not mistaken, and in which uh, Gregor Samsa wakes up one day to find himself turned into a vermin. And the way people's beha behavior to him changes and how his own feeling uh, feelings shift and change and how his uh, whole outlook towards life changes forms this entire story and this novella it was really hard hitting for me in a lot of ways i won't elaborate on them but uh, to find yourself changed overnight and to find people's uh, people's behavior towards you changing uh, even though you know that you are the same person that you were before uh, just your physical appearance changed i mean it's a lot like metaphorical and all. It would take you like one and a half hour to read it. Next is Galatea by Madeline Miller. This is the story of a sculptor uh, in ancient Greece who uh, has made Galatea. He, he has made the sculpture and now uh, a boon has been granted to him in which Galatea has turned into a woman. And now he thinks that she has to obey him. She has to do everything that he says because he was the one who created her. But Galatea now has to think of their child as well. So what, how is she going to escape from his uh, clutches forms this story. It's a very short book, like it's this big and uh, it has about uh, 60, 65 pages, which you can finish like this. And I couldn't recommend this book more, especially because it's such a, such a strong feminist empowering story i love it next are a bunch of ruskin bond books basically any ruskin bond book be it uh, the blue umbrella be it the cherry tree be it the room on the roof be it uh, maharani there are so many books that ruskin bond has written that are so sweet that are simple they are they are sweet but they are also so heartwarming they will fill you with love and uh, a and what kind of a love? A love for everything in nature. My favorite has got to be the Blue Umbrella and they are very easy to read, very quick. Um, Cherry Tree and the Blue Umbrella, they are short stories. You can finish them in 10 minutes. And uh, the others, because of the ease to read, you can like two and a half hours maximum. Next is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by uh, Toshikazu Kawaguchi and translated into English by Jeffrey Trusselot. I did a whole uh, vlog for this particular book. Uh, if you'd like to go check that out, link here as well as in the description box below. There are four different tracks in the story, but each of them takes place in a cafe in which uh, when you sit at a particular table, you can go back in time. You can stay in the past. You have to come back before the coffee gets cold. Th there are conditions to it, obviously, which you will read in the book. It makes you, it makes you understand the importance of the moment that has gone by because in real life, you can't really go back and then come back and do whatever you want to do but this book and the thought of second chances and the thought of missed chances it's so heartwarming loved it 
highly recommend it's like it's a very short book about 200 pages or something and uh, it's great next are two books by mitch album one is for one more day and the other is tuesdays with maury for one more day is about uh, regrets and uh, what would you do if you had one more day in your life would anything change and I just marked the hell out of this book when I read it. It didn't take me long to read this book and it's so beautiful. It talks about regrets, about what you would do if you had uh, just one more day. How much could you change if you had one more day in your life? And I love the book. It's it's great. It made me super emotional. Mitch Album books do that. And it also gives you a lot of wisdom and the same thing happened with tuesdays with maury in which maury is the narrator's old teacher i think the narrator this is mitch album's story and um, maury he slowly starts losing his faculties and what happens after that like how he deals with it forms that entire story and like i said mitch album's books hold a lot of wisdom and tuesdays with maury even more so because maury is this very free kind of character who knows what he wants from life and who knows the value of what he has in life and he is very assured self-assured but he's also a human being and the way his emotions bubble up it will make you cry Next are two graphic novels that are centered around uh, the intern Japanese internment camps that the Americans had in, uh, in around World War II uh, after Pearl Harbor. And uh, the first one is Displacement by Kiku Hughes in which uh, uh, the main character is transported into uh, a past time during those times of the internment camps and what exactly uh, she sees at that time what exactly she experiences uh, and uh, how she and her mother get through this whole thing forms that story and it was one of my favorite books of 2021 i loved it and the next one is they called us enemy by josh takai of uh, star trek fame and he talks about his experience in the japanese internment camp by uh, when he was around age 8 or 10 around that age and he talks about his parents about how his parents saw the world and how his parents taught him kindness despite uh, everything that was happening to them and when you see the kind of uh, person that Josh Takai became later in life like very a kind activist who fought for uh, what he thought was right it's it's very empowering to see next is the Pehri by pankaj kapoor i read this in hindi but it's also available in the english translation if you'd like to go check that out this is the story of amma b who who lives in lucknow she is a landlady about her life and about how at three o'clock every afternoon she hears the sound of footsteps but uh, when she peeks out there's nobody over there and this whole story about uh, being alone being lonely and uh, about her relationship with the people who go in and out who come to her and uh, people in her life Pankaj Kapoor has a way with words and he has shown it in that if you read Hindi I would recommend you read it in Hindi it's going to be a beautiful experience more beautiful experience than if you read it in English. Next is Wonder by RJ Palacio. This is a story of Augie Pullman who is uh, who has Treacher Collins syndrome and his face is disfigured and he needs a lot of surgeries and a lot of care etc 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 but uh, after years of being homeschooled he is now going to start school. She's going to start going to school and his experiences from there, his experiences with kids uh, meeting new kids making new friends and uh, kids bullying him and the whole package the book is one of the most beautiful children's books i've read in a long time next is my sister the serial killer by oinkan Bra braithwaite and this is a creepy book it's about two sisters one of whom is a serial killer obviously from the title and what exactly happens throughout the story and what it means to be family uh, you, you'll see in this like it's a very jarring book it will take some time for you to digest ki why why is this thing happening but it's also very entertaining next are sudha murti books any sudha murti book you pick up you're going to have fun you're going to learn about morals about life lessons in a very nice grandmotherly kind of manner she has this way of narration like a very 
uh, warm, cozy kind of narration that will make you feel like you are sitting beside your grandmother and your and she's telling you stories. Next is I've Never Been Unhappier by Shaheen Bhatt. She has written this very short uh, memoir uh, in novella length in which she talks about her battle with depression and how her journey with depression and how her battle with depression was. It can be so different for different people and to read her experiences it sort of sent a dagger through my heart because it was so gut-wrenching and uh, if you get triggered by such things then I would recommend please be careful. Next up is Why You Should Read Children's Books Even Though You Are So Old and Wise by Catherine Rundle. This book is exactly that. It talks about why you should read children's books and why you should not dismiss children's books. That's it. It's a very short book about 60-70 pages uh, this big uh, like I mentioned for Galatea. This is also like this, uh, this small and that's all and you can finish it in like half an hour but it's very important in the way it talks about the importance of children's books and why you should not be dismissive of them. Next up is Circus Folks and Village Freaks by Aparna Upadhyay Sanyal and uh, this, is, this has 18 short stories about circus folks and village freaks. Uh, it's sort of like fairy tales in which uh, the author talks about different kind of people and how they go about their life. It's it's very interesting to read. It's, it's a very fun read. It also has illustrations if I'm not mistaken. I read this like way back when, I think 2019. But it's very easy to read. Uh, you can finish it in like two hours maximum. And uh, I, I would highly recommend it. I highly recommend it back then. I rated it very highly back then and uh, even now the memory just makes me smile. I don't talk about it enough but when I do it's always positively. Next is The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. This is going to be a bit of a difficult read. Uh, in my opinion it's because of the content. It talks about memory. You remember things differently sometimes and it's a good book because it talks about so much that we don't acknowledge in our lives uh, when you look at a lens when you look at things that you think you remember but sometimes it just happened completely differently it's happened multiple times with me uh, you we always don't remember things as they happen sometimes we don't remember only next is koi good news by zareen khan this is like one of my favorite books of all time uh, because it's so fun and it, and the topic it talks about it talks about two people who uh, have been married for four years but they haven't had a child yet and now the pressure is starting and oh my god this is like the reason i loved it so much is because it talks about these things about how a couple couple is not allowed to live their life according to society because they think that their life is not fulfilled because they ha don't have a child yet. Anyway, it was, Zareen Khan has a way of writing. She makes the, these topics fun. She makes this sarcasm in it, this snappiness to it. And I absolutely loved it. Next is The Importance of Being Honest by Oscar Wilde. I was about to say Olivia Wilde. No, not Olivia Wilde. No, 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 no. Anyway, this is a comedy of sorts in which uh, a guy who says that his name is Ernest but when the woman he is he, he loves or the woman he is in a relationship finds out that his name is not Ernest, what happens after that? Because she attaches a lot of name, a lot of importance to the name Ernest. What exactly happens, how this whole thing unfolds, this very sort of slapstick comedy kind of thing and it's it was a very fun read it's very short uh, i think you'll finish it in like one and a half hour or something irrespective of it being a classic or not it's a very easy read and you'll have a lot of fun reading it you'll laugh next is we were liars by e lockhart this was another bookbound club uh, pick which we uh, did the live show for earlier this year anyway this is the story of a bunch of cousins of the from the sinclair family who are very rich they uh, spend their summers in on, on a private island and when during one summer something happens uh, that has affected the whole family things uh, seem different but uh, the liars who the cousins call themselves they have they are reunited two years later two summers later to help cadence remember 
what exactly has happened but does cadence remember what what has happened it's a very disturbing sort of story when you realize what has happened because uh, it focuses on the consequence of your mistakes of one's mistakes i mean it's a strange way to go about telling that but it's also a great thriller it will keep you on the edge of your toes i mean you will want to punch certain people but other than that it's going to be a super entertaining read if you'd like to go check out our book discussion about this our bound club discussion then i leave the link here as well as in the description box below next is the periodic table of feminism by marisa bait this is another short book uh, in which uh, marisa bait talks about the important figures in feminism and there's not much else to add to it because uh, some of these descriptions are like one one and a half page long and some of these are even uh, one paragraph long but you see uh, in nutshells throughout the book you see uh, how different women how different feminist figures played a role in uh, bringing feminism to where it is today in to the struggle for women to have power equal footing in this world last in this long list of recommendations is off mice and men by john steinbeck this was uh, one of the most recent books that i've read and this talks about two men trying to make it in the great depression and all the characters are white except for one to see how it was back then it was a different uh, slightly different experience and uh, i liked reading it uh, especially because it was so short but i had an issue with how racism was handled in this book i mean sure the author is a is a white author who was a product of his time don't give me all of that it that's not something i was i was personally comfortable with i've spoken more about this in my august and september wrap up if you'd like to go check that out link here as well as in the description box below so those were the 60 plus book recommendations that i had for you today uh it, pick these books up read them and smash your goodreads goal with that smash that thing out of the park what did you think of this video did you like it did you not like it which of these books have you read which ones do you want to read what recommendations for short and easy quick reads do you have for uh, for us for me for everybody over here let us know in the comments below i'd love to hear from you if you like this video please like it and share it to spread the word and if you like my content and would like to see more from me don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the bell icon beside the subscribe button to get notified as and when i post new videos thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video until next time keep reading keep watching and add melodrama to your life